If you look at this map, you will see Norway, a country of Northern Europe that occupies the western half of the Scandinavian peninsula. Nearly half of the country's population lives in the far south, in the region surrounding Oslo, the capital. With majestic glaciers, fjords and mountains, Norway is famous for its dramatic natural landscape. Its rugged terrain, on the other hand, makes travel difficult. More than 1,000 fjords line the west coast of the Scandinavian country, which is home to one-third of the country's 5.3 million inhabitants. The 1,100-kilometer journey from Kristiansand in the south to Trondheim in the north via the west coast, for example, currently takes 21 hours and requires seven ferry crossings. To address these issues, something fascinating and unusual is taking place in the country, which has stunned engineers and architects around the world. What is going on in Norway and how will this mega project transform the country? Join us in today's video as we explore this mega project that has stunned engineers all over the world. Lying on the northern outskirts of the European continent and thus avoiding the characteristics of a geographic crossroads, Norway, the Northern Way, has maintained a great homogeneity among its peoples and their way of life. Small enclaves of immigrants, mostly from southeastern Europe and South Asia, established themselves in the Oslo region in the late 20th century, but the country's inhabitants are overwhelming Nordic. Norway has land borders only to the east, with Sweden, Finland and Russia, with the Barents Sea to the north, the Norwegian Sea and the North Sea to the west, and the Skager Strait to the south. Norway occupies part of Northern Europe's Fennoscandian Shield, the extremely hard bedrock which is mostly composed of granite and other heat and pressure formed materials is 1 to 2 billion years old. The rugged west coast of Norway, home to thousands, is challenging to travel by car. It takes some time, a very long time. The route is unpredictable due to the harsh weather conditions with roads frequently closed and ferries frequently cancelling their departure due to snow, high winds or high waves. In response to this, the Norwegian Public Roads Administration is currently working on the world's first floating highway. Through the elimination of seven different ferry crossings, the coastal highway route E39 will cut the 21-hour travel time between the Norwegian cities of Kristiansand in the south and Trondheim in the north by at least half. These crossings will be replaced with bridges, tunnels and the innovative new submerged floating tube bridges that give the coastal road its nickname. But Norway has its work cut out for it, as no other country has completed a project of this size and scale using floating tunnels and attempting the historic roadway project will cost more than $47 billion. There are some highways that travellers are familiar with, Route 66, the Pacific Coast Highway and Germany's Autobahn. These legendary roads are legendary in their own right. With the completion of this mega project, Norway will be able to add its name to this list. The country will make significant enhancements to the already impressive E39 highway that runs along its coastline. The E indicates that the road is part of the European Road Network, a vast network of roads that spans Europe. By the end of the project, vehicles will be able to drive from Trondheim in the north of Norway all the way down the west coast to Kristiansand and even Oslo in the south, with the option to stop at all major coastal cities along the way. It is essential to keep in mind that the E39 at the present time does not function as a single continuous highway. It spans the entire west coast of Norway, but due to deep and expansive fjords, ferries are required at crossing points, preventing a continuous and uninterrupted drive for the entire length of the highway. All of this is set to change within the next 30 years. We have finished about 11% of the project work, said Tor Askland. Tor is the project manager for the E39 highway project, and he specializes in fjord crossings, risk management, sustainable infrastructure, planning and construction, and strategies, to name a few areas of expertise. He suspected that politicians would prioritize the parts of the project that are the most socio-economically profitable. According to Tor, the western coast of Norway generates roughly 60% of Norway's export value. A fluid connection of the entire west coast of Norway has the potential to generate a great deal of income for Norway as a whole, as well as for the towns and cities that are located along the coast, as they will be significantly more accessible. Engineers are planning alternative structures, such as bridges or tunnels, to replace today's seven ferries. They are considering a new type of structure, the submerged floating tube bridge, SFTB, 
For some of the deepest and longest fjords exposed to harsh weather conditions where suspension bridges or floating bridges would be difficult to construct. Existing engineering solutions are inapplicable when a fjord is deeper than 100 meters or wider than 2 to 3 kilometers. The seabed is too deep for a conventional rock tunnel to be built there because doing so would require the use of a significant amount of land on the shores. Even if they were suitable for deep crossings, floating bridges and other types of bridges on tension leg platforms TLP, are vulnerable to harsh weather conditions such as strong waves and currents. This is why the SFTB has become a popular solution for some of the world's longest and deepest fjords. Its submergence naturally reduces the main sea load. The tube would be placed underwater at a depth sufficient to avoid water traffic and reduce the main sea load, but not so deep that high water pressure would need to be dealt with, typically depths between 20 and 50 metres 60 and 150 feet, are sufficient. Vertical stability would be provided by tethers anchored to the seabed or pontoons floating on the surface. The submerged floating tube bridge is certainly an engineering marvel, but the idea isn't new. The first known proposal was made in 1886 by Sir James Edward Reed, a naval architect from the United Kingdom. In Norway, the idea was studied since 1923, and since the studies have been performed by the Norwegian Public Road Administration for the E39, Norway knows that other countries are considering building the same type of structure. They are in discussions with several of them, so it's more of a collaboration than a competition, but it will be exciting to see which country is the first to construct this structure. A project as monumental as this needs all hands on deck and hands the project has. The multidisciplinary project requires people with knowledge in safety, materials technology, social economics, structural engineering, operation and maintenance, climate and environment, etc. One aspect of the project will be a considerably challenging engineering hurdle to leap over. The various fjords, long, narrow, deep inlets of the sea, are going to be a challenge for engineers. Tor noted the Sula Fjorden crossing is the toughest crossing due to the harsh environment close to the Atlantic Ocean. The project's focal point is the use of bridges to connect points of land between the fjords. Because the fjords are deep, traditional bridges with pillars to the bottom are not possible. Furthermore, many of the fjords are too wide for suspension bridges. Suspension bridges are used by engineers for bridges less than 2 kilometers long. They have a lot of experience with floating structures such as platforms, but these bridges are long and slim and behave differently in the waves and wind than a single floating point offshore. The goal for these bridges is to be strong enough to withstand the constant battering of wind and waves while also avoiding fatigue. Engineers must keep this in mind while also keeping costs and carbon footprint to a minimum. Even though there are many meters of ordinary road to upgrade and build, Tor said, I must say that the fjord crossings are the most exciting part. All crossings have to be developed to fit the local conditions, but the smallest can be built with known technology. To expand the limits of known technology and to be able to build large constructions with new technology is a huge challenge. This project is filled with many firsts, largest and longest titles for many of these bridges. A 5 km long floating bridge to cross Bjorna Fjorden is also in the works, along with a long cable stay bridge which can turn out to be the longest in the world. The Boknafjord and Kvitsofjord form a massive watery barrier north of Stavanger on the way to Bergen. At present, the route is bridged by way of a lengthy ferry journey. With a maximum depth of 392 metres below sea level and a length of 26.7 kilometres, the Rogfast Tunnel will be the world's longest and deepest subsea road tunnel, cutting driving time by 40 minutes. It is scheduled to open in 2026, with tolls implemented for the first 20 years of operation. Engineers and researchers working on the project are also conducting tests to determine how the driving experience will be, with safety being their top priority. They are planning scale tests for fires and explosions, taking into consideration the possibility of having a truck carrying dangerous goods explode in the tunnel. Another risk is ship or submarine collisions, as the fjords serve as a training ground for the Norwegian Navy. The Coastal Highway Route project collaborates with three of the Nordic region's largest universities, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, the University of Stavanger, and the Chalmers University of Technology, and has approximately 50 PhD candidates working on various engineering challenges related to the E39 project. 
It is evident that much of the ongoing research is important, not only for the E39 coastal highway route, but also for the global road system. They are working hard to disseminate the results of their research so that every aspect of their work contributes to international knowledge and is not wasted. As Norway continues to embark on the country's largest infrastructure project in history, the world can only marvel at what it will accomplish in the years to come. What do you think of this mega project underway in Norway? Tell us in the comments down below.